Hello learners, this session is on the process of interpersonal communication. Before you sit down for the lecture, I suggest you read thoroughly the write-up on the topic. You will find the write-up in the course content. Now let's get on with our lecture. I have for you two models on interpersonal communication. I feel the process of interpersonal communication can be best explained with these two diagrams. Right? Let's start with diagram number one. You will see that the diagram has five elements. There is a sender, there is a channel, there is a receiver, and there is noise, right? Now, in this particular uh, diagram, the sender is divided into two entities, the brain as well as the encoder decoder device. Same for the receiver decoder, encoder, device as well as the brain. Act in, in real terms, decoder, encoder and the brain is housed in the same individual. It is the same individual. For convenience sake, we are kind of breaking it down to explain it in detail. So, essentially there are uh, five elements sender, receiver, sign, channel and of course noise. Now this is one of the earlier models and perhaps the most common model or the most, most uh, often used model to try and explain the process of uh, interpersonal communication. And this does a fairly good job. I am not uh, dismissing it uh, outright. But let us first look at how or how this model or this diagram explains the process. The sender has thoughts, ideas, emotions, information to transmit, right? These thoughts, ideas, emotions, information, whatever originates in the sender's brain, right? In one of the interlocutors, the, the sender is one of the interlocutors. It, it originates in the sender's brain. Now, the sender wants to transmit them, convey them to the receiver. How can he do it? Well, there is only one way. Those thoughts, those, that information, those ideas, those emotions that the sender is seeking to convey to the listener or the receiver has to travel through a channel to reach the receiver. Now, thoughts, emotions, ideas, feelings cannot travel on their own. They don't, they, they, they need to be converted into something that can travel. That, that's where the encoder decoder apparatus comes into play. The encoder decoder apparatus, the, the uh, vocal cords, our tongue, lips, teeth, ears, right? the, the, um, uh, the ear uh, drums and uh, accompanying um, mechanisms, the, uh, all together become the encoder decoder apparatus. Why am I saying it is encoder decoder apparatus? Because every encoder is in reverse a decoder as well. When you one is sending out an information, it functions, the apparatus functions as a encoder. 
when one is receiving information, the apparatus works as a decoder. So, it, it functions as both encoder and decoder. So, the brain has a thought. Thoughts cannot travel. If thoughts could travel, all we had to do was to think the thought and it would automatically get deposited in the receiver's brain. Right? If that was possible, then we would not need language, we would not need a code. All we had to do was think and the other person will catch our thoughts. That is telepathy. That is still in the future. As of now, we need to a, we need a vehicle for our thoughts, for our ideas, for the information we seek to convey to travel through the channel. Right? The channel, as I have said uh, previously as well, is either air or wire or a combination of air and wire. So, my idea, if I am the sender, I have an idea. I formulate the idea in, into signs, right? I encode the idea into signs. And I then convey these signs or send these signs on to the receiver via the channel. What are these signs? They are both verbal and nonverbal. Our words are acoustic pulses, right? When we say utter something, our oral oral system converts our thought into a sound pulses which can travel. Without these sound pulses, my thought would not reach you. Right? These thoughts reach you because I have a vehicle to send them across in. I have a, a vehicle can carry my thoughts to you. And without a vehicle, thoughts will not be transmitted. And signs are those vehicles. Uh, Nonverbal signs, verbal signs are our words, the language, uh, it may be any language, your native tongue, your second language, your foreign language whatever, any language you use. In addition to that, there are nonverbal signs also. Look at me, I am using my hands, I am, I am using my face, I am using, I, 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 you are reading my, uh, from my posture as well, right? So, the package of signs consisting of verbal and nonverbal cues or behavior travels and they are packaged uh, by the encoder decoder mechanism in, in us. Right? The thought is taken over by or, or sent or passed on to the encoder decoder. The en encoder decoder then converts it into a package of signs that can travel and send it across. Right? It travels through the channel and reaches the encoder decoder mechanism of the receiver. The encoder decoder mechanism of the receiver, as far as the receiver is concerned, it functions as the decoder. It receives these incoming signs, whether verbal or nonverbal, and decode them into messages, into thoughts, into ideas, right? It decodes them into messages and passes them on to the brain, right? Let me say this again. Incoming messages are first perceived by the decoder, right? And here, the decoder is not just the oral, oral mechanism. Even your eyes function as a decoder because for many nonverbal cues, the eyes are the decoders. Right? So, you perceive signs coming towards you. The decoder decodes everything it perceives and passes on what it thinks it has decoded or whatever it has decoded on to the brain to make sense. Let me repeat. 
in regular interpersonal communication you don't break down the person in uh, the interlocutors into brain and encoder and decoder devices and so on and so forth it's interlocutor one interlocutor two communicator communicatee sender receiver so the sender's message is encoded sent through the channel received by listener decoded and he or she makes sense of the message in this particular diagram this element noise remember we talked about noise earlier right is inevitable right you can't wish it away there is nothing one can do about um, completely doing away with noise that is not possible in this diagram noise acts on the channel so um, while your package of signs or packet of signs are traveling through the channel they are acted on the packets are acted on by noise it could be environmental noise is essentially external noise it's acting on the channel it's essentially external noise now this goes back and forth the, the receiver then encodes a response to what has been received and sends it back to the sender and the sender then in turn functions as the receiver he or she in turn responds to the received reply and this goes on back and forth the desired result whose result the initiator's result is achieved this is a back and forth process if you go by this model communication is a very simple and straightforward act if you encode properly and the receiver decodes it properly making allowances for noises or noise acting on the channel communication is a fairly simple straightforward act and it's a foregone conclusion desired result is a foregone conclusion but if you have if you have impaired impaired abilities to think or your thought processes are not uh, uh, good enough or or or, or, or uh, sharp enough or, or rich enough or your decoder encoder mechanism is um, flawed for some reason then encoding wouldn't be appropriate or good as a consequence there could be faulty decoding by the receiver and the message could be warped or misunderstood but if encoding and decoding is perfect right is 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 good then communication should not be a problem communication should be as is is as easy as children play it's quite simple it's quite straightforward but we all know that communication is not that easy we all know that communication is quite complex we all know that communication is very challenging and we all also know that ambiguity and confusion and misunderstandings and miscommunication is quite common in interpersonal interactions despite being able to encode and decode accurately appropriately well so if you go by this diagram you 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 if you have healthy enough if you if you have enough thoughts in your mind you can communicate and if i am healthy enough uh, i mean in the sense my uh, uh, encoder decoder uh, mechanisms are not compromised and i also have a thinking mind i i can easily communicate with you right it's just a matter of you encoding your thoughts and sending it across to me and i decoding it and then uh, reacting it till a uh, uh, desired result is achieved but the truth of the matter is it is not that simple or easy it's quite the opposite 
Uh, and I have a few favorite sitcoms, uh, you know, that I, I, I watch regularly, English uh, sitcoms. There was one particular uh, serial that I was following very closely. I, I quite liked it. But during one episode, somewhere in the episode, one of the characters in the sitcom made a statement, uh, the following statement. It went like, I quote, I work the graveyard at the post office. I work the graveyard at the post office. I was a little taken aback. I was confused. Did I not hear it properly? Yes, he did say, I work the graveyard at the post office. What, what does he mean by that? What does a graveyard got to do in a post office or with a post office? How are they connected? I, didn't, I, I couldn't make sense of that utterance. What was this person saying? Right? I, I, did I not encode it? Uh, did I not decode it properly? Yes, I think I decoded it properly. I went back and listened to it again. Yes, I heard what he said. Did he not encode it? Yes, of course he encoded it well, right? We are both fairly proficient or more or less on this at the same level of proficiency as far as uh, the language being used is concerned. That is, in this case, it was English, right? Then where did I go wrong? Encoding was right. Decoding was right, right? Uh, According to this model, I should not have any, there should be no confusion. I should have understood um, uh, the utterance, the statement. It, I, it, it should not have functioned as a barrier, right? But it did. It did not have the desired effect. Ambiguity persisted. I was confused. I lost thread of the story. And I, I kind of lost interest in that episode. Right? But it is still bothering me. So later in the day, I mentioned it to my teenage son. Um, and uh, he smiled at me and said, look, dad, graveyard shift in the context of a workplace refers to the midnight shift. It's as simple as that. It has got nothing to do with the graveyard as such, right? There is no graveyard in the post office or near the post office. The post office has not shifted to the graveyard. The graveyard has not shifted to the post office. There are no graves. There are no uh, ghosts, nothing. All it means is it's the midnight shift, right? It was not a encoding, decoding error issue. It was much, much more than that, right? If it, it, according to this diagram, the one that we are looking at, miscommunication, ambiguity, breakdown, misunderstandings can happen only if there is a serious problem in either encoding or decoding. In this instance, there was no such problem. Still, I couldn't successfully make meaning. I couldn't make sense of what was being said. I lost interest. I mean, I was confused, right? I was a little disturbed also that I couldn't make out what was being said. So that example illustrates the fact that, or the, the point that I have been making, that communication cannot be just a matter of encoding and decoding, however well that is done. However well that is done, it cannot be just a matter of encoding and decoding. Diagram 2 is actually a modified version of diagram 1. It has the same elements and it adheres more or less to the process explained earlier. However, there are some differences. 
there are some changes variations before i start talking about it i like to mention that this particular diagram there is always a channel and there is always noise right so far this looks very much like earlier model in terms of elements in terms of the process but if you look closely if you take a closer look at this particular diagram it would reveal several differences and those differences they are the key to understanding the process of interpersonal communication what are those differences i can list three types of differences three types of differences first type so if you look at a screen on the screen i have signs right emanating from the communicator these are signs various signs please count the number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right representative eight signs emanating or put out or transmitted by the communicator how many does how many reaches the communicator let's count the signs the communicator perceives or signs that have reached the communicator 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 there is obviously there is a reduction in the number of signs received by the communicator what could have happened to these signs then obviously they were lost in transit right i sent out eight you received only six where did the other two go we don't know but they were lost they are lost right they lost right the this loss will significantly affect the communicator's ability to decode the message these messages or a communicator decodes a message based on the signs he or she is perceiving is receiving right so if he or she the communicator receives only six signs her decoding is based on those six signs doesn't matter how many signs the communicator had actually originally transmitted so first difference in this is in the previous model there was no mention of such loss in transition right there was no mention of fewer um uh, you know signs reaching the re receiver the assumption was that everything that was sent by the communicator would automatically reach the uh receiver though there would be some uh, a, a, a impact uh, on, on route because of noise on account of noise but here we are noticing that there is a significant reduction in the number of signs received or perceived by the communicator and that will result in uh, or will have an impact on the way uh, on the the recreation of the message or or the or or the uh, uh, decoding of the message decoding is dependent on what is perceived or what is received if you receive only six you decode only six doesn't matter how many the communicator send out right this problem could essentially be because of either flawed encoding if the encoding if there is a problem in encoding the message probably it could contribute to that particular sign not reaching the communicator let me give you a quick and simple example see there has to be a certain rhythm certain pace certain volume uh uh in our utterances right and this the, the, the these factors have to be appropriate 
enough to uh, uh, to carry to the community but some people have this habit of mumbling i'm just trying to um, illustrate this point right mumbling so technically theoretically the speaker has put out the sign put out a word but it is so mumbled or 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 uh, you know speak, he or she is speaking at a ve- at a, at, at uh, um, uh, the volume is so low that the community did not receive it it was lost I, I hope i have made my point clear right it could be faulty encoding another reason could be strong channel interference traveling through the, the channel is compromised so badly that anything traveling through it is going to be distorted heavily then you could expect a loss in uh, a loss of signs fewer signs actually getting through this uh, channel interference to the communicate right so fewer signs have uh, have a negative impact on um uh, they are on the process of communication see when i want to say something i am choosing my signs carefully because whatever I, if i have chosen 10 different kinds of signs is because i firmly believe that i need a minimum of those 10 i need all 10 to convey my message effectively to the communicate and if three or four is lost and only six gets through to the communicate my message is already compromised my message is like is already distorted and the communicate cannot be blamed for that because he or she makes sense of what he or she sees or receives i hope that first difference is clear to you now the second difference if you have noticed let's go back to the diagram is that some signs the signs that reached the communicate some of the signs that actually reached the communicate they seem to have changed in terms of size and shape and and value and so on and so forth for example look at this particular one this arrow when it reached the communicate has taken on a different shape right this particular sign when it reached the communicate has again taken on a bigger size right now if you look closely at the other signs also you'll see there are signs not all of them not all the signs some of the signs in transit on route get distorted into weaker or sometimes stronger or different shapes and sizes and values right that's a fact when these signs undergo change in value in shape in size the communicate again has no choice but to decode what he or she receives or perceives if if you put out a particular uh, sign with a particular value but by the time it reached the communicate the value has changed or became distorted or diluted or strengthened or whatever the communicate will decipher decode what he or she sees and not what actually you sent out again it is not a communicate's fault he or she can do nothing else but decode what he or she sees coming towards her or is 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 being transmitted to him or her this is mostly on account of channel interference this happens mostly on account of channel interference if the the channel interference is very high if the channel is um very um it, it's not appropriate uh it can seriously cause distortions of this kind that's difference number 2 now difference number 
and the most important one. We look at a diagram. Signs that a community perceives, sees, which were not actually put out by the communicator. See, look at this sign. This sign was not actually put out by the communicator, yet the communicator sees it. Right? Uh, this particular sign, again not put out by the communicator, but the communicator sees it. And he or she factors that into the decoding process, right? making meaning process. Now, how does this happen? It happens because of two reasons. One, they are being transmitted, right? but we are not aware of it. We did not choose to deploy them, but yet they are being deployed. Why? Probably because of factors like strong emotions or other internal barriers like preoccupation and so on and so forth. Most of these unconscious, most of them, most of these unconscious non-deliberate signs are transmitted via non-verbal cues, voice, body language and so on. The communicator is actually putting out those signs. Right? It is not as if he is not putting, he is putting, he is not aware of it. Unfortunately, he or she is not aware of it. But these signs are emanating from him or her and is being perceived or seen and decoded by the communicator. Right? The communicator has absolutely no control over these additional signs that are being put out by him unknowingly, unconsciously and that is perhaps because of um, internal noise. For example, if you are uh, very nervous while interacting with um, another person, without your being aware of it, your body will put out signs telling the recipient, the other person that you are nervous. You do not have to hold a placard to say I am nervous. The other person can see or sense it for himself or herself. How? He can see your twitchy movements, your shifting eyes, your sweaty brow, your restless posture. Many, many such things give away the fact that you are nervous. And the community includes that also in the process of making meaning. These um, uh, signs were not actually deliberately put out, but they, they were put out without your knowledge, without the center's knowledge. But there is another category of signs, right, which is again part of this third difference, where the communicate, that is this person, the receiver, on account of his own internal noise. It could be fear, it could be prejudice, it could be selfishness or it could even be a cultural thing. He or she imagines signs where actually there are none. So the communicate imagines non-existent signs because of communicate's internal noise. In the previous thing, the communicator's internal noise was sending out messages without a communicator being aware of it. Here, the communicate reads or sees or perceives messages as if they are coming from the communicator. But these, these signs are not there. They are non-existent and only a figment of the communicate's imagination. But nevertheless, the community includes those also in his mess meaning making, in making sense of the message, in his decoding. In other words, this particular model implies that communication is not a simple, straightforward, mechanical exercise of encoding and decoding signs. It is a complex process of making sense of a array of signs, both verbal and nonverbal. How does the process start? 
it starts with the communicator that is the sender deliberately selecting and transmitting a variety of signs to the communicate to convey his message or her message in addition to the signs that the communicator has deliberately put out you have two more sets of signs one signs coming out from the communicator involuntary signs two signs are, that are not there but still the communicate sees it because of his or her internal noise in addition to all this this package is subjected to channel interference on route therefore the array of signs the communicate perceives and decodes is different vastly from the array of signs the communicator actually put out or transmitted and the communicate decodes the array he or she perceives and meaning is made according to that that decoding therefore it's clear to you if you look at the picture it's clear to you that as a result of decoding the communicate arrives at a message which is highly unlikely to be the same as the original message look at this this is the original message this is the received message the decoded message is highly unlikely to be the same as the original message right the received message thus is always different from the original intended message the reaction to it the response to it will also therefore may not be as desired that's the problem you react to what you have decoded or made sense of and what you have made sense of is not essentially what the communicator really wanted you to so in interpersonal communication this ambiguity this misreading is inevitable good communicators realize this fact accept it recognize the challenge and they compensate by deploying adequate signs and by other means they compensate through various means to make their messages understood by the communicate understood the way they want it understood let me end this uh, uh, lecture by saying communication is deemed effective when the communicator achieves satisfactory and intended response from the communicate and that is not an easy task i've just explained why right you have to ensure one has to ensure that the message you are sending out is understood the way you want it understood by the receiver and that's a very difficult task and that's why communication is perhaps one of the most difficult acts